Hello, my friends. Welcome back to part two of this four part Microsoft AZ 500 exam cram series. I have more great material prepared for you today. So let's get right to it. All righty, my friends, we are on part two of the AZ 500 exam cram series. And this is for domain two, which is implement platform protection, which consists of two sub domains, advanced network security and advanced security for compute. So let's just get down to it. Now I mentioned in part one, the goals of the series are pretty simple. I want to help you get further faster with your exam prep. We're going to be you know, a shade over an hour, hour and 15 in this series, I think when it's all said and done. And at the end of the day, you'll have uh, better focus to your study and hopefully some anchor facts in your head here that will help your recall on exam day. So when you see that for exam slide, that's where I'm going to show you the facts you want to remember for the AZ 500 exam, as well as areas that you want to spend time focusing your study. So let's get to it. Let's start with uh, advanced network security. So you may see questions around securing connectivity of virtual networks that could include VPN authentication, express route encryption, uh, maybe even VNet peering. So, so spend some time in that area. Uh, configuring network security groups and application security groups, which help in the NSG scenario may come up. Uh, creating and configuring Azure Firewall. Uh, and also, configuring Azure front door as an application gateway. So more on that in just a moment. So for the exam, let's talk about where you want to focus here and what you want to be ready for potentially. It's hard to guess everything, but we can take some clues from the skills measured. So no express route encryption options. Read the, uh, the Microsoft Docs page. It's actually mentioned in the uh, AZ500 exam prep guide. And know the default connectivity of your virtual networks and your subnet. So you know, subnets being uh, reachable from one another by default when they're in the same virtual network and VNets or virtual networks not being uh, connected by default. You know, just two of many rules you want to be aware of. So know the common deployment model for Azure Firewall. And what I mean there is pretty commonly we'll see Azure Firewall deployed with a central VNet. And I'm just going to take you to the what is Azure Firewall page. And here's a, a picture of that common deployment model where you have a central VNet. So if you don't have a lot of time in with Azure Firewall, actually the what is Azure Firewall page is a great place to start. Um, <clears throat> continuing down the road here, know what app security groups and service tags bring to NSG configuration. Now service tags wasn't mentioned explicitly, but app security groups were and service tags kind of go hand in hand. Service tags actually play a role both in NSG and in firewall configuration in that they help us when we're dealing with IP addresses uh, and ranges particularly that might change. Uh, know the difference between front door and Azure app gateway. I'm actually going to show you something here in just a minute that I think will make that uh, an easy question for you to answer. So let's just talk about our regional and global options here. So we're going to look at non HTTPS traffic. So let just to simplify, we'll call that non web traffic and then HTTPS traffic. We'll call that web traffic. So when we're working within an Azure regional regional data center, a load balancer is how we deal with that application traffic. That's not web based. And the app gateway is how we deal with our SSL TLS traffic. Now on a global scale, if we're routing to the best Azure, regional data center traffic manager is how we handle non HTTP traffic and on a global scale, Azure front door uh, helps us with the HTTPS traffic. So, so while front door and application gateway are layer seven load balancers, the primary difference here is front door is a global service where, whereas application gateway is regional. So hopefully that helps. Uh, if you don't have my AZ 500 exam prep guide, do make sure you get a copy of that. It's free. And the areas that I'm suggesting you study, there are reading links in there for all of these things uh, that will definitely be helpful to you. Uh, if you're a LinkedIn Learning Premium member, go have a look at the Azure Security Engineer uh, learning track over there, which uh, basically gives you the path through my AZ 500 exam study track. 
If you don't have a, a LinkedIn premium membership, you can reach out to me personally on LinkedIn and I'll, uh, if I, if I still have, uh, memberships available, I'll front you a 90 day trial to, uh, LinkedIn premium, which includes access to that catalog. All right. So let's continue with advanced network security and finish this one up. So you may be questioned on configuring a, a web app firewall or WAF on Azure Application Gateway. Azure Bastion may come up, uh, as might configuring a firewall on a storage account, Azure SQL, Key Vault, or App Service. We call this a resource firewall because those services have uh, a built-in firewalling capability. Service endpoints may come up, and I'm going to talk to you about this in a minute. I find this is an area not many people have worked with all that much. And Azure DDoS uh, may come up on the exam. This, these last two were relatively recent ads that came in the July 2020 update for the exam. So let's talk about focus areas for the exam here. Um, know Azure Bastion's value prop and how to configure an Azure Bastion instance in the Azure portal. So Bastion gives us remote access to VMs uh, without the need for public IP addresses uh, right there in the Azure portal. Uh, <clears throat> Be ready to answer the question, should Azure Bastion and Just-in-Time VM Access be used together? Somebody mentioned out in the public space, out on LinkedIn, that they had seen a question uh, about those two together. And if you just go do a web search for Azure Bastion and Just-in-Time VM Access together, you will find uh, a thread over on User Voice. You'll find a couple of folks that have blogged about this, and you'll have everything you need to know uh, for the exam. So no resource firewall. So go have a look. If you go look on Azure SQL or go look on Azure Storage, you know, you definitely have an Azure Storage account and you can see what a resource firewall looks like and get familiar with what uh, configuration options are possible because you can use that to limit access to those accounts. Um, learn both service endpoints, that line item in the, uh, the skills measured, and private endpoints. And I'll show you why in just a moment. I, I think if you learn these together, you're going to find that it's much easier to remember um, what service endpoints uh, do for you, uh, simply because you'll have a frame, a comparative frame of reference. So here we go. Here's a table. And on the left, I have the, uh, the characteristics of private endpoint. On the right, the characteristics of service endpoint, the one that you're uh, suggested to remember for the exam. So we'll look at these characteristics, starting with network path and, and working our way down the list. So private endpoint controls access to pass services over a private network. Uh, controlling access to pass services over the public internet for a service endpoint. Uh, with private endpoint, we've got a VNet to a single pass instance via the, the Microsoft backbone. Uh, with service endpoint, VNet to all instances of pass service. Uh, as well. So, so we have single instance versus all instances. PaaS resources are mapped to a private IP address with the private endpoint and the destination is still a public IP address with the service endpoint. It's just accessed via the Azure backbone. In fact, when you enable a service endpoint, you'll actually get a, a warning that you're going to have a momentary uh, interruption in service. So I ho hope that helps you there. So for the exam, Definitely know how to enable and configure a web app firewall on an Azure app gateway. Uh, be familiar with the uh, prevention and detection modes, the WAF modes, which, which could come up in the context of a, a web app firewall question. So you have prevention mode, detection mode. It'll be worth knowing what those are. And for WAF on Azure app gateway, also be sure you know what rule groups and the OWASP core rule sets are all about. And finally, Learn what the standard tier of Azure DDoS delivers over the basic tier. In fact, I'll give you a quick chart here to just show you exactly what the incremental difference is. It's these three items at the, the bottom here, protection policies tuned to your VNet, logging, alerting, and telemetry, and resource cost scale protection. If these videos are helpful, be sure to give us a like and subscribe so you get a notification every time we drop a new video and feel free to leave us a comment with new installments you'd like to see. All right, so now we're ready for subdomain two, which is advanced security for compute. Uh, this is another long one. Again, we only had two subdomains, so they're quite long. Configuring endpoint protection might come up. 
configuring and monitoring system updates for VM. So don't think update management, think updates to your management agents and VM extensions. Configuring authentication for Azure Container Registry. If we're working with containers, uh, a container registry to host your container images is definitely going to be something you'll see. Configuring security for different types of containers. I do expect the focus on the exam is going to be very AKS uh, heavy uh, just by you know virtue of the adoption of that service. Uh, implementing vulnerability management. So this is vulnerability management in the container sense and then configuring isolation for Azure Kubernetes service. So let me break these down for you to simplify your study a bit. So the first two there are virtual machine focused. And I assume that you have some experience with Azure VMs. You're going to have some study to do here because I, I expect you're not going to be super familiar with the, the fine grain details of those two items. But these next four here are all related to containers and Kubernetes is going to factor in here. Uh, so for these last couple, vulnerability management is something you'll hear discussed around virtual machines, but in this case, this is around container images. And I know that because vulnerability management for VMs is covered in domain three of this exam. So we'll talk about these last two uh, at some length here in just a minute because I want to draw a map uh, for pre preparation for those of you that don't have a lot of experience with Azure Kubernetes service or, or Kubernetes in particular. Uh, because you could spend a lot of time really trying to figure out where you need to focus. I'm going to try to draw a map that is hopefully helpful to you in that respect. So, for the exam, where do we want to focus? Know your endpoint protection and system updates for VMs. So, so understand how those updates behave. Know how to enable endpoint protection for your VMs. So authentication options for Azure Container Registry. So if you don't have a lot of experience with Azure Container Registry, there are better than half a dozen uh, items in the table covering authentication for Azure Container Registry. So make sure you go to that additional reading and you read through those scenarios if, uh, if you're not already familiar. Uh, it's certainly more than just one or two uh, options you need to consider there. Get familiar with securing containers and, and put more of your focus on AKS, and uh, Azure Container uh, instances. Uh, know your container isolation options and best practices for, for AKS. Now these last two items here, securing containers and container isolation, I'm just gonna cover some of this with you now to, uh, to ease your, your journey in this area. So container security uh, in Azure Security Center is, uh, it's a pretty strong feature set in Security Center. So. Uh, there are features related to your container hosts, your Kubernetes cluster, your AKS cluster, as well as your container registry, your container images in the registry. So let's just talk about what those features look like in Security Center. So there's runtime protection, uh, real-time threat protection uh, at the, uh, the host level, um, environment hardening recommendations that'll be surfaced for your AKS cluster. And then for your, your images, there's vulnerability management. So image scanning, uh, courtesy of Qualys, which is an industry leading offering in this area. So Qualys is the same uh, vendor that's used for the, uh, the VM vulnerability management. So let's talk about AKS cluster isolation. So you have logical isolation and physical isolation. So I wanna simplify the uh, scenario for you and, and distill the best practices here. So in a logical scenario, we are logically isolating our teams and our projects on uh, the same cluster. And you see here, we're in these cases sharing uh, the same cluster, but using different nodes in that cluster. So it's, it's logical isolation, not absolute physical isolation. We have um, reduced management overhead because we're keeping this logical. We're not breaking this out to separate clusters. Our cost is going to be less as a result. Our compute costs are going to be reduced. And our pod density, so, so in AKS, you know, the pod is, is kind of our baseline uh, deployment element. Our pod density is going to be greater because we're sharing the cluster. Uh, security. Uh, theoretically is less because if we need to absolutely isolate ourselves from uh, other uh, neighbors in the cluster, we can't uh, 
do that with absolute certainty uh, because we're not physically isolated. So, so the best practice here, though, is use logical isolation whenever you can to separate teams and projects. Now, let's just juxtapose this to physical uh, cluster isolation. So in this case, you see we are breaking those teams and projects out to their own cluster. So the complexity is going to be greater. We've got more management overhead. We've got greater compute cost. We've got lower pod density. So you notice that these arrows are all red and these arrows were all green before, right? Those arrows are red because these are negatives. Uh, the positive here is security. So our security, if we need to isolate, would be uh, our ability to isolate is greater here. So the best practice here is minimize the use of physical isolation to only those scenarios where you absolutely have a, a strong need for physical isolation. So just finishing, finishing out advanced security for compute. Um, configuring security for container registry, we can safely assume Azure Container Registry here. Uh, implementing Azure Disk Encryption. Configuring Auth and Security for Azure App Service. Configuring SSL TLS certificates might come up, as well as authentication for AKS, so Kubernetes again, and configuring automatic updates. This time, automatic updates for your Kubernetes cluster is what you want to focus on, really. So for the exam, get hands-on the, the free app service managed certificates feature if you haven't already. So when we think about where Microsoft is likely to focus for an exam, it's going to be on those shiny features that are modern that provide uh, management advantages like automation. Uh, certificate auto renewal uh, could well come up. And, and in those scenarios, those are going to revolve around things like app service, front door, uh, Azure Key Vault is going to be involved. So you want to spend some time in that area for, uh, for certificates and certificate renewal. No Azure disk encryption, so that's your VM level encryption. Uh, and, and you can already guess that, you know, in a Windows VM, BitLocker is involved. But also be familiar with Azure storage service encryption and, and your default settings there and your configuration options there. So, so if one of these is at the virtual machine level and the other is working at the storage account level. So two very different features there. So no automatic updates for Azure VMs, but but put some focus on Azure Kubernetes service and your and your cluster automatic updates. There's a process, uh, an automated process there, um, but there's some details you want to be aware of for the exam so you understand what your responsibilities are in that uh, automated update process. Because you know, Microsoft provides uh, the service here. They don't manage your applications 100%, so you'll need to know some details in there. Authentication and security, so think role-based access control for Azure App Service and AKS, you know, so when you see RBAC, make sure you get in and you look at the, the roles related to the services. Authentication and security around Azure Container Registry and automatic updates in you know, AKS, as I mentioned, for the node, you know, the node cluster. Make sure you focus there. All right, again, if you don't already have a copy, grab my AZ500 exam prep guide that's got additional reading you know, that I've mentioned here in the, uh, the video. And go over and check out that series at LinkedIn Learning. Ping me for a 90-day free trial if you don't already have one. And there you have it. So that is part two. Thanks for watching. Make sure to give us a like and subscribe so you get a, a notification every time we drop a new video. And I'll see you back here for part three.